you know your children the best, you know what they can handle, but also challenge them and and push them a little bit because nothing is more rewarding than having your family together at these types of events or business meetings. better, right, babe? Yeah! Yeah. She founded an architectural concrete company. He founded a hundred million dollar clothing company. She took the world by storm as a social media star. He took the world by storm as a famous serial entrepreneur. Together we started a business. And had babies. Now we're figuring out the best ways to do both. Join us as we learn from other entrepreneurs going through the same life struggles. As they share their life hacks about success, love, kids. And everything in between. Everyone that you will ever meet knows something that you don't. Learn from them. Quote by Bill Nye. Welcome to the Pretty and Punk Podcast. My name is Dan Caldwell, and I'm here with my beautiful wife, Ilda Koferenzi. And you I said your whole part for you. I was waiting for you to step in, but you, you, didn't, you were too busy posing over here. You had your arms up, you're posing like you're... <laughs> I don't know what was going on over there, but I didn't feel like you were going to jump in there and say anything, so I just said it for you. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Before we jump into the podcast, we have another great podcast, of course. Before we jump into the podcast, uh, we just want to let you know that you can look at the show notes below <laughs> if you want to know where we are. No, we actually looked it up this time. So our our follow us on Instagram or message us on Instagram. It's We're probably the most attentive to the Instagram, which is at pretty and punk podcast they find us anyway they find yeah. us in the show notes yeah. but i think every link is pretty and punk podcast at pretty and punk podcast yeah be sure mm. to check us out and uh, and if you have any messages or comments or you can always leave them in the podcast messages um again we read those to all of our kids and they love hearing them we read them read them at the dinner table and it yeah. becomes part of what our dinner what makes our dinner so enjoyable yeah so wherever you feel comfortable messaging us message us there and yes i was posting i mean what wife doesn't want to hear that she's beautiful from her husband sometimes he forgets to <laughs> you tell were posing. me but this You're time posing. Like, you had your hands oh, up you look like this i don't know the statue of I liberty enjoy or it. and okay and welcome to my handsome husband dan yeah. Caldwell. why don't we start a podcast off you, like that but you're not dancing you see like it's know, not but, having this well, same... because i was in shock <laughs> <laughs> like i'd never heard that before you are your hands um, I okay. always tell you you're hot yeah but I mean during the podcast I'm like you could tell the world if you want to okay okay so we have another great podcast today and it's actually because we have so many um things coming up right mm -hmm. now and always and have networking events I guess you could call them different yeah, speaking always... events and networking events and we always do we always have something going Meet, on here business and there, but, meetings. but we were talking about the ones we have going on um that are coming up this month mm -hmm. and we 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 were just kind of in this conversation about how we we network with our kids. Yeah, we do. And we think it's and we want to just kind of pass that on because I think there's so many people out there. Not to say that you might find an event that it might not be appropriate the, appropriate to bring your kids to, but we again want our kids to see us networking with other entrepreneurs. We want them to see how we interact with these entrepreneurs right. and how we the conversations that we get into and they actually i mean daniel's like looks up to a lot of, i mean he watches some of these entrepreneurs Has that since we, he was a baby we have him watch certain videos and certain things it's kind of part of his schooling he's homeschooled so we part of the schooling that we do with him um he watches some of this and he watches different entrepreneurs and what they're talking about and we're and we're always talking about like the language and stuff. We try That's to put right. him with this right entrepreneur so that he doesn't really get influenced by certain language because we <laughs> want him to hear clean, clean the cleaner entrepreneurs. But right, well, for some course. reason, he always gravitates to. But the he's ones also that, at the age where he understands that these aren't words that that just because someone you. uses something that is not appropriate, he understands that it's wrong. In his eyes, he doesn't agree with it. He'll plug his ears and he'll put his own sensor 
um, out there. I used to do it for him. I used to give him earmuffs and stuff, but now he's at the age where he does it for himself or his sister. And it's, it's hard. I mean, especially for me in the architectural concrete company, that was a language that was just there. I didn't necessarily like it, but it was there. And a lot of entrepreneurs, they do use this language and it's, it's hard. So you kind of have to be choosy about who you expose yourself to. But I think you, you said it right. Daniel has has a way of looking past that. Yeah, and even though right. like some of his favorite entrepreneurs or oh, darn some it, of I the um, the more uh, uh, controversial or aggressive or whatever you want to call it. Courageous. Uh, try to find that. Like a Gary V, you know, oh my gosh, probably yes. couldn't get through a couple sentences without using a, oh, an F bomb or so. All right. Um, I just I, I I'm so proud of the kind of the way he approaches. Well we know that. what's we know what's acceptable in our family and we don't use that language and he understands that. So that a little bit off topic, but this is how we deal with it in our home. And he knows that that's totally What not. are some of the other things that we kind of like do when we're taking, we know we're taking them to a, a networking event? Well, the one thing is sometimes it gets a little complicated. So during a break or on our way home, we change it to a language that they understand. And we encourage the questions and we encourage the, what did you like the best about today? What excited you the most? And we really try to spark spark that um, excitement and learning. I mean, with anything, yeah, with we language, want them to be math, excited about it. I spelling, mean, truthfully, all of that. You know, they're kids, so it's like you have to kind of find the excitement right. in the event for them right, because right. they're, I mean, it's might be excited. We might be excited as adults to be able to interact like that, but, you know, mm-hmm. kids are, you know, they do play and there are no playgrounds there or anything. So, right. so we have to like, show them the excitement and right. what's exciting about the event and and oh there's you know the uh, member watching Gary V go up there and tell and that's another thing too we like to prepare them for the people if that they're they going to meet they have something that is on their heart that they want to share with someone it, that they look up to I don't ever want them to feel shy or scared I encourage them to go up there And talk to them and tell them what they appreciate about their lesson or about their message. That's important to me. Um, The other thing is Daniel has a professional speaking business. And it's hard for people to wrap their head around that. But he is delivering a full speech for entrepreneurs, thousands of people, and he can speak. So I'm not going to be the one to pitch it. If he wants to reach out and be on someone's stage, I'm telling him now, listen, you got to make a video. You got to reach out to this person um, in the likes of, you know, a Gary V or an Ed Milet or Lewis Howes, like just think big and go for it. And maybe they don't see the light in you or they may, might not believe it. Send them the demo. And even if they look past you, don't let that break your heart. Don't let that make you cry. You keep going until they see the value in you. Do you know how many times people said no to me with my company and in auditions, I mean, a lot of people don't yeah. know the auditioning world, but they would say no to you a lot and mainly because of how you looked or how you spoke. And they would say no a lot. I would hear no a lot. And it made me so strong and so confident. So he needs to experience that and never take it to heart. And I encourage other children to experience that too. It gives them this hard I don't want to say hard, but it gives them this, what, what do you want to call it? Resiliency. Like resilience. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I think, and, and I think it's great that we practice that with him before mm-hmm. he goes into those situations. Mm-hmm. I mean, well, I mean, he's, we he's been him. overlooked at times. It's like some people don't see the value in children, but listen, when I'm on stage and you're on stage or we're on stage together, I will look to the children. I won't just bypass them. Oh, it's just some kid. That is our future generation. Be careful. You treat them like gold because they're going to be the future generation. Pour into them. I remember Bo's story too. Remember uh, the the one where his, his fan, like he was a fan of 
who was it, the football player, and he just looked past oh, him. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and it then broke when he finally his got heart. into the NFL, he faced him. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's a great story. And I and I think that we don't want our kids to idolize people too much. No. You know, so you got to, when you're with your kids, it's, it's there's a careful balance of having those conversations where you want them to be inspired by these people. Mm-hmm. And it's why we prepare them with the questions or questions that we want, you know, that they want to ask, but yeah. we want to word, help them word them right so that when they go up to ask these these questions that um, they get a good response. And exposing them yeah. to these people, I feel like they're never starstruck. He knows who entrepreneurs are over celebrities, and we hang out with plenty of both. But I feel like because... We listen to that. Oh, one thing, one thing I just want to share because I don't want it to, Did to you pass. Just get sidetracked? No, no. It's a well, lesson that I point. learned because I was very nervous about, wh- I couldn't have kids, but I was also nervous about, this is what I was told I couldn't have kids. So I was talking to a producer friend of mine and he said, if you do end up having the blessing of having children, don't let them teach you, you you, um, what did he say? You teach them your ways. So don't just listen to the baby music and the nursery rhymes, listen to podcasts, let them learn your life so that it doesn't cause a big shock for them. So we had that ever since they were babies, they Mm -hmm. were coming to the events, they were listening to podcasts, they were doing the things that we had in our life because we wanted to, he's like, you train them, you train them to do everything you do. My kids come to set and they're very quiet while we're filming. This is it huge producer in Hollywood. Yeah, no, I think that, and that was, you that was telling a me that of, one time. Yeah, yeah I, I told I, you, you exactly what he to said. that line of thinking because yeah. I don't think I was thinking that way. Mm-hmm. And I'd always felt like, oh, we got to, you know, like I don't we'll mind bringing the kids, them at but home. we need to, or leave them at home. But we, if we bring them, they, we have to, you know, should we leave them with a playground? You know, should we bring a nanny? Should we bring a nanny so they could so live in their own can, bubble? You know, because... Yeah. I, I, that's kind of what I was, my mindset right. at the time. I wanted them, I wanted to teach them. I mm-hmm. was always believed in that. Right. And I wanted them but to But you learn. thought at an older age. And for me, it just really resonated because that's how I grew up. I well, grew up in I, business. I'm, so I'm, I got I mean, what he exposing said. exposing them to adult concepts. Right, right, right. And Understand. so that they have a certain way of portraying themselves when they're in front of these people. Mm-hmm. You know, they're not mm-hmm. acting like little kids running around. Mm-hmm. They're acting like grownups, you know, very um, poised and uh, very, right. c- uh, when they ask these questions, they ask them Are very truly, clearly and deliberately. interested. Yes. And so I think that that's really important. That's an important part. And you know what I like too is, you know, recently Daniel was listening to that, that uh, ClickFunnels event oh, um, yeah. where they were actually... I think people are warming up to this idea that kids are coming into their own and they want to be entrepreneurs and it's another superpower. Like they want to, you know, some kids want to be cowboys. Some kids want to, you know, fly to the moon. Other kids want to be entrepreneurs right? and they want to build their own businesses. And so I think other people that are throwing events are warming up to this idea and they're making these events more kid friendly. Right. I I love that. Don't you see some of those? Yeah. We're going to host one. Yep. Someday. <laughs> it's coming. It's on the bucket list. Yeah. I mean, I, we definitely, we talk about you it a lot. You make me laugh. That, it's happening soon, but yeah. just well, you, you kid friendly. Because you looked at me like, we're going to host one. And I'm like, Well, we are. We've been okay. talking about it. And we have our entrepreneur, like our wish list. And we're friends with these people and even celebrities. There's a lot of celebrities that are involved in businesses. And I feel like that term entrepreneurship it's such a wide definition and there's so much creativity and so many, so much that goes into it. I feel that it's such an exciting thing for a child if they could just understand it um, or, or not understand it, but just be a part of it. Just understand the different rainbows of what you can do with entrepreneurship. There's real estate, there's business there's brick and mortar so, so there's a, so many different things or, right uh, youtubing or what it's it's gotten so 
you it's know, all it's a, a part business. of everything now. Right. I mean, when I think that, uh, that, you know, now it's, it's kind of all encompassing. You could be right. a, a mother at home and start your own business. And That's now right. You're an entrepreneur. That's right. So I think these kids, they get so much from this, especially coming to these events. And I they don't can ever want and, them to think it's a boring thing. I no, guess that's what I'm trying to say. That true. under that umbrella of entrepreneurship, under business, under that umbrella, there is so much to choose from. There is so much opportunity. And again, our parents that have come to this country from a different country. Well, I mean, I, I go I'm pretty sure. far back to find my parents. Right. Yeah. But I'm just saying that the, the parents that are immigrants, they came to this country to give us opportunity. So I think that's what we all want as parents is to give our children opportunity and just let them see the smorgasbord of what's out there under the umbrella of business and entrepreneurship. You know, um, one of the things we also want to mention is that like, um, you know, we try, we've we learned a few things while being out there with our kids at these different events. And um, one of the things was <laughs> that that kids like to come up and ask a lot of questions. And we're often in oh, these yeah, conversations with uh, entrepreneurs or different, you know, friends of ours or people that we're talking to at the event. Imagine being in the middle of a conversation and your little one's pulling on your thing, dad, 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 I want to, because oh they want to ask a question. They're excited, right. you know, yeah. they're excited. Or Destiny, you know, go when they're mom, 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 mom. <laughs> and, and then you lose happened. your train of thought this right is, when you're networking, right when you're yeah. giving this person valuable or value or even receiving value. And then all of a sudden, boom, I've it's seen gone. It happen We've to all you. had I've seen had it happen it. to you. Just plain right. as day, like totally lose your train of thought because. That's okay. You, I blame it on mommy brain, right? Moms have mommy brain. Oh, sorry, mommy brain. Well, but you don't yeah, have but to when do you that. you lose that and you get off track. Oh, and yeah. And, and it's it feels frustrating. like, and because it, I think we, you know, there's, there's principles that we hold dear about when we have conversations with people, you know, making them feel like they're important and that we're, that we're paying that attention we're listening to, to, to their them, com- that they're always number one in priority. And let's get it straight. Like our kids are never like mom, 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 dad, 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 but there could be an opportunity where Daniel has to use What's a potty or something. Well, it has happened. It's happened. It's like, happened. And, and usually in, because Daniel wants to make question. a conversation. He wants to ask he a question. He wants to be included. Or he wants to ask a That's question right. about what are we talking about? Like, what is what did, what did you guys just mean by this? Mm-hmm. He asks that a lot. Right. You know, what did you mean by when you were saying you were going to invest wants to be included, in this? Yeah. Like, what does that mean exactly? Right. Like, what were you going to invest in? And where? what did they want you to do you know like he'll ask these great questions but, but it's we don't not want the you time asking yet in the middle of our conversation we have to finish our so thoughts so we have this little hack mm-hmm. that um anybody our, can use that anybody that everybody should implement i believe um that when we're talking to them our kids will come up and now um they'll come up and they'll put their hand on our shoulder or on right. our on our leg and we look and sometimes at them. I don't notice it right away. I and, know because it's and, yeah, yeah. Because it's kind of subtle, you know. Like maybe they're just there to love oh, on us, loving yeah. me, right? But, um, they put their hand on our leg or something, and then we notice that they that means that they want to ask a question. They want to say something, and then or we'll they want to put our ask. hand on top of their hand. And let and them that know lets them know that, that they're important we and know that they want to ask a question, and that right. we are. Uh, we'll leave our hand there until we can actually acknowledge them. And so we'll finish our conversation or get to a point where we can actually have a break in the conversation because sometimes it might be a bathroom break. Right. Be like, exactly. Ah, Dad, I got to use the restroom. Right. So, but we we'll, just let either our party finish their thought or we finish our thought and then we look at them. And what do we say? <laughs> We'll acknowledge them. We'll just, you know, like, how can I help you, Dan? I just Daniel. felt like I cut you how off, so I, I didn't want to take that. Uh, you didn't cut take me off, tort. but that's okay. I'll, I'll, I'll remember that. <laughs> I should have put my hand on your shoulder. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Practice what you preach. I know, right? I know. No, so I, I, we just like that little hack, and because especially when you go to these types of events, there's so much going so on, much, and yeah. there's so many people you're talking to, and you don't want to forget about your kids, but you all, and you want to include them. 
but you want them to know that too that that we important stuff that is they're going important down and that we want to make them important and make them a part of our that's conversations right. and we try to include them whenever we can in our conversations so i think that's important too yeah that's our hack that's our gift from us to you and um what are some of the things we like to prepare our kids i mean we like to um we, well, do, we just we get just, well, we let them we'll know do, what well, the, the questions that's right. one thing Right. If they want to speak to anyone, we encourage them to do that. Or even when they're at home and Daniel's pitching himself with his speaking, I encourage him to prepare his own videos and be creative about it. Um, What do you want to say to this person? Why do you want to be on this person's stage? And he's really in charge of networking himself. And it's, it's a little bit hard sometimes to watch because sometimes people, as I said, they don't really understand that he has he's got the man in the arena speech nailed down every entrepreneur mentions it in their book but most entrepreneurs don't even they don't they don't know this any entrepreneurs i'll challenge you with my little because he knew (laughs) it when he was a toddler i will challenge yaki took the challenge and he actually memorized it and then sent daniel the video he did such a good job but that's that's what I'm saying is like don't don't underestimate a child. They have it in them. They are so they are so they're such a blessing and they're going to be our next future generation of entrepreneurs and just changing the world. The whole point is changing the world and sparking something in someone out there. The whole point is helping people. Well, I think some of the things that you can do to, I just wanted to add a few of the other things that we do, some other uh, stuff that we use to prepare, Yeah, um, is also just like um, a little bit of role play sometimes, you know, like if they're still trying to understand what, what's going to happen there, because different events are different, you know, some are, some are just speaking events where we might mm-hmm. not be doing as much networking. It might be, actually the networking will probably be with people just sitting next to us. And But the understanding that they need to be quiet during the speaking mm-hmm. event, that there's other people there that want right. to hear and that what, you know, that Sometimes, we're going to be listening to speeches. And right. Daniel listens, and Daniel and Destiny both listen to mm-hmm. speeches um, from, from you know, uh, videos and stuff that we'll, we'll have them watch sometimes. But they just get, they, we want them to know what they're about to walk into. Right. Um, well, especially at our business meetings, if we're meeting, we're going to a fancy restaurant <clears throat> and they know they have to mind their manners. Most of the time they're, they're very quiet and they're listening and they're watching. Um, and just know your child's threshold. How long are they going to be okay in that situation? Our kids are good because they were brought up like that. But when you're introducing it, you want to just... Um, spoon feed them. Well, I wouldn't Give say them they're a- perfect. I would say that I never said times, they were perfect. Well, no, no, no. No, there's times. I where, know that. I, I mean, know I, that I, Daniel I will real. go longer than Destiny. Yeah, for sure. For I sure. know the difference between them. So sometimes maybe I'll have to go for a walk with Destiny, or you'll have to go for a walk with Destiny. Yeah. I understand this about my family. She's getting much better, but I know maybe a year ago, two years ago. Um, oh, that, I had to that. take breaks. Also, uh, nursing. She wants to nurse, and she's she's still nursing. I don't know. How long well, this that is event that last, we did in LA. You're right. That's a time. that's a good example. That you know they were they were a little bit at their threshold there, mm-hmm. and you had to go in to do that panel. I mm-hmm. couldn't even go in to watch because they were a little bit. Um, you know, they just wanted to go do something. Right, they and were running around. They wanted to be on the red carpet taking the photos. We've been doing a lot. A lot had been going on, and you mm-hmm. had to go do that panel. And I wanted to go there and watch you, but <laughs> I couldn't because I just really wanted. They there was a um, what was it? Kind of like a little uh, social area. media. Like no, well, they were show. They had different people had booths and stuff set up. Oh. And yeah, they were kind of excited right. about the booths and all these different things that they had going yeah. on. People were giving away little trinkets and stuff at, at each <laughs> oh, booth. Yeah, that's and right. so they thought that that was a lot more exciting and, and the idea of going in there. Well, because people were spoiling them. They were yes. giving them all kinds of stuff. They had the these only little thing. toys and little keychains. And- right. So just keep that in mind that, that just, you know, just spoon feed them. 
and and you know your children the best. You know what they can handle, but also challenge them and and push them a little bit because nothing is more rewarding than having your family together at these types of events or business meetings. And with the business meetings, as I was going to say, sometimes you don't know how your your people are going to act. Like the producer, we meet with a lot of producers, different business people, but usually don't be shy. They have kids of their own. Most of them have kids of their own and they are so welcoming to this idea of having your kids there. And I, I, I personally think that you should tell them why you're bringing your kids. I've never yeah, had better right. reactions from people than when I actually tell them we bring our kids to these events because we want them to see us interact with people like you. Mm -hmm. We want them to learn from that. And mm -hmm. nobody's going to teach them this at a school no or nobody's way. showing them how to do this mm -hmm. or, or, you know, being leading them by example, except for us. That's right. We're that burden is left on us as parents. And That's you our responsibility. As parents, and we have to do that. And so I encourage you to kind of, you know, uh, if to just break that ice mm -hmm. so that people don't feel weird, like awkward, you know, like sometimes right. you show up to this meeting that's this an important meeting with your kids um, and your, your whole family. Um, if you break that ice with them and tell right. them exactly why you brought the kids today, that you'll find somebody who's usually a thousand times more receptive to the whole idea and actually excited about it. And like, and I then bring, they start they to, start how saying, many times I should bring my kids. Yes. How many times have we broken that mold? I remember people are so, so scared to include their kids and it's like, just do it. Just do it. I love it. And when I see another entrepreneur, like even for example, Bradley, and I know because we've interviewed him. So he includes his family all the time, but I just wanted to encourage him and just say, wow, I love it. He's on the jet with his babies and his wife. And I just I just had to tell him, I love this. I love seeing that. And he already knows. And that's a thing that he does. But I just want to encourage always parents that are doing it. I'll go up to them in public and just, I love that you have your child here at this meeting or at this event. I love it. I love seeing it. Yeah. That's, uh, I think watching more and more entrepreneurs and parents do it is exciting for us mm -hmm. because we don't know it if we influenced it. them or well, if Well, I know just, we have influenced a lot I of know, people. I know, but, but. I, I mean, sometimes you just, it's just great to see it more. Yes. Um, because I really think we're building tomorrow's entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. um, and I think you mentioned this a little bit at the beginning, but I think when you leave, I think it's very important to have those teachable moments that you can speak about with your kids. You know, like, what did you learn today? And what did what was the most exciting yeah. part of, of the conference today? And whose speech was your favorite? Yeah. And what was your best conversation? Mm -hmm. And what was it about? Sometimes they get into conversations. Uh, where were we? Oh, when Daniel was speaking at one of his events. Um, you know, he was in conversations with... Uh, Garrett White and mm -hmm. I, I I didn't really hear the whole conversation so I was asking him you know what was the conversation about yeah and and just having those conversations with them afterwards to kind it's of sum very up encouraging. the experience yeah and 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 hear from them it's exciting to hear it's exciting for me to hear from them yeah I love what that. what they were most excited about mm -hmm. right do you have any great pieces of knowledge that you want to leave everybody with before we jump off? Well, I just focus. think the only thing that I, I want to wrap it up with is that if it doesn't go as planned, nothing ever goes as planned. Don't beat yourself up over it. Just, just keep trying. And also if, say, if your kids want to meet someone or they have their heart set on meeting someone and that person just glazes over them, never... Never just encourage your kids to not take it to heart. They're going to have the no answer so many times in their life. And people may not see the light that they actually are. Don't take it to heart. Don't let them take it to heart. Okay? This and, is, and don't this, take this this is business. But one of my favorite quotes is, 
um, uh, the best revenge is massive success. <laughs> and you just push that on them a little bit. Oh, and it doesn't, dear. that's from Frank Sinatra. Um, <laughs> But I just, and not that doesn't mean the same thing. It's I not guess like for you're trying me, to get revenge, it's just like, but I like just that. do so good that they can't look away. That's kind of the That's thing that I tell Daniel is just do so good. Just prove it to him. Show him in a way that, or her, that they just can't look away. And they're like, dang, I think I met that little boy. And dang it. I glazed over him like he was nothing. Or that little girl, yeah. you Remember know? Remember me? Remember. <laughs> <laughs> Just like Bo, I love yeah. Bo's story where he he ha- he's he's wants this shirt. Was it a jersey or a piece of paper? He wanted it signed by his his ultimate favorite player. And then years later, there he is, eye contact, eye to eye with this same player that just glazed over him because he's just this little kid. Yeah, it's just a little kid. And now he's going to war on the field yeah. with and this guy. now he's guy. the younger, faster player. Yeah. On Remember the field. me, bro? <laughs> I love it. So anyway. So anyways, if you guys have any um, events that you've tried this at or and things didn't work out or they did work out or mm-hmm. what you liked about it, what you didn't like about it, or you have any questions, um, be sure to leave them in the comments because we'd love to hear that. We'd love to hear some feedback about it because I know it's kind of a newer concept and even though if you've listened to us in the past, you know that we're all about it. We're still trying to refine I feel our like, messages. I feel like immigrants, though, immigrants, they had these businesses when it wasn't cool. So we're kind of used to growing up in the business. But <clears throat> I guess you can say it's a new concept. But there are a lot of people that did grow up it's in that business. It's a new old business. concept, for it's sure. It's a new old. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, that, that's good. I just mean I the agree. conferences and right, these events. Right, right, right. The networking right. part yeah. of it anyways. Yeah. Um, being true. a part of the business, we've always preached that that's, that's something that could be a family affair but Mm -hmm. networking as a family affair is kind of a fairly new concept and i think it's something that's going to catch on Mm -hmm. i think so too well thank you guys for joining us with for today's podcast (laughs) and and like i said if you have any uh input we'd love to hear it in the comments and we will catch you guys next time yes god bless take care we'll see you next week thank you for listening to the pudding punk podcast Please subscribe. Thank you for listening. I hope that changed your life. God bless. See you next time. You've worked hard for what you have. Your money, your assets, your 401k, and home. Isn't it all worth protecting? Nearly one in four consumers have been a victim of identity theft. LifeLock Ultimate Plus helps protect your finances with up to $3 million in reimbursement. LifeLock alerts you to identity threats you might miss. And if your identity is stolen, your dedicated U.S.-based restoration specialist will work to fix it. Let LifeLock help protect what you've worked so hard for. Save 25% off your first year on LifeLock Ultimate Plus at LifeLock.com slash aware. Terms apply.